Good evening, everyone. This is Pastor Bob, and welcome to another Deeper Dive. Uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, yesterday, we had the opportunity to uh, focus on our walk with the Lord, and one of the examples that we alluded to, not only by me talking about Dr. King, but also showing a short video on his life. And then, of course, my son, we taped, who shared with you his own personal experience when he marched uh, several years ago with a group of people in Selma, Alabama, and how that changed his life. So tonight we're talking with uh, Dr. Walltower. Dr. Walltower is the senior pastor at Shiloh Baptist Church in York, Pennsylvania. And I'm sure if you go on Facebook, you can probably find out a lot about his church as well. And uh, so tonight we're going to talk about the legacy of Dr. King. Uh, we're going to talk about what does that mean today, just as uh, Dr. Walltower and I sit here and converse, uh, what does that mean to us, uh, things we've learned, uh, things we've learned about uh, people uh, of all races, how does that play into where we are today in the body of Christ. Uh, so we hope that we'll answer some things in our conversation that will help you that as a believer, or maybe you're just interested in following Jesus and you haven't made that step yet, I hope that things we say will encourage you that there's a lifestyle we want to live that is biblical and that really honors God. So Dr. Walthauer, I'll just start out by uh, saying a couple things that uh, have been on my uh, mind and then if you wanna pick up and carry on from there. But uh, several several years ago now, I guess it's been uh, maybe two years, I read uh, the book that really opened my eyes, The New Jim Crow. And it was kind of the first time that I really began to understand how institutions or uh, groups of people form opinion, whether it's in the judicial system, whether it's in you know other areas of life, how they kind of have these opinions already established and, you know, they don't really consider the circumstances. And then as I've gotten to know people over the years, I, of course, always, I, I grew up in York, but I would say in the last 15 years, really got a chance to work with uh, many of the urban pastors. Several of them have spoken here at uh, Genesis, but I remember one time talking to uh, Bishop Evans and I said I was listening to a story of of an African-American lady who worked behind the counter in a store. And she talked about how uh, in that situation, if a person who is white comes into the store, how often instead of when they're exchanging uh, money, they just kind of lay it on the counter as though that person is not worthy to even have human contact. I don't know, uh, from your perspective, now again, when I hear those stories, I think honestly, first of all, it incites a little bit of anger. I, I kind of scratch my head and can't believe that, oh my goodness, this is a reality when you don't think that way yourself to realize there are people out there. But So I don't, would you mind talking about some of those things? I know I threw out a lot here. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for allowing me to come. Uh, let me commend you on the work that you're doing here at Genesis. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our experience together precedes you becoming the senior pastor here. So let me first say congratulations well, thank you. and uh, pray that God continue to bless your mm -hmm. ministry. Um, in terms of, of, of Dr. King and the legacy and the stories that you're telling, uh, coming here from South Florida, um, my my uh, last thirty some years of my life um, was in the Deep South, mm. and so my experience in the in the Deep South is having experienced segregation, uh, Jim Crow, um, up close and personal, mm -hmm. and um, we oftentimes say that uh, Jim Crow is now Jim Crow Esquire. So there are a lot of the, the, the face of Jim Crow has mm -hmm. changed, but the mindset and the institution of Jim Crow mm. still exist. So you don't have the vivid uh, imageries of what you saw in the 60s with the mm -hmm. Ku Klux Klan, the cross burnings and things mm -hmm. like that, the, the, the whites only sign, you don't, you don't see that. Right. But the symptoms mm. and the systems of Jim Crow are still existing. And I think when you talk about Dr. King, we have to look at his life, not just as a preacher, mm -hmm. but as a prophet. Mm. And um, 
I think he understood that his call was beyond the pulpit because he pastored mm -hmm. Dexter Avenue yes. Baptist Church in uh, Montgomery. Oh. And um, and he he resigned from that post to go back to Ebenezer Baptist Church, mm -hmm. uh, which is where the, uh, the new senator for Georgia, uh, Raphael Warnock, is now the uh, senator mm. in Georgia, but he pastors. Oh, okay. He pastors Ebenezer, where Dr. Oh, King wow. served. Okay. And um, and but he went back there to serve alongside his father, grandfather mm -hmm. in the ministry as an assistant pastor, mm -hmm. because he understood that his his call was prophetic. Mm. And I think we have to understand um, those stories mm -hmm. are still going on today. Yeah. Uh, I've been, exp I've experienced that mm -hmm. going into a uh, an establishment, having been followed by the police. Usually, uh, you know, this is kind of funny because usually mm -hmm. when we're together, I'm dressed more like him. <laughs> he's dressed more like me. So we switch roles. So because it is the interview, I dress down, you dress. But but I've been in situations in in my you know suit and tie or yeah. dressed like you and have been followed by the police. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's just for. People of color who have come from that background, it, it, it's, it's sad to say, but it's normal for us. Yes. And uh, in many instances, it's expected. So hmm. we see it so much um, and we become, I guess, numb to it. Hmm. But it, it is a definite reality. Well, uh, as you mentioned that, uh, my neighbor uh, is a Baltimore County police officer and she, she's black. And she was telling my wife, oh, several months ago, she said, you know, when I walk into a 7-Eleven in my uniform, there's great respect. When I walk in as an average citizen, yes, I, like you just described, I'm watched. People think I'm up to something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a whole different ball game. Yes. So. But, you know, that's why Jesus says we're the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. And and as as Christians, or I like to call ourselves kingdomites, uh -huh. as Shiloh, uh, I, I say we are called to represent the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And as kingdomites, uh, God puts us in positions to add, to add flavor to things that are either flavorless yeah. or stale. Mm -hmm. And I think what the body of Christ has to do is to not allow the world to to cause us to lose our savor. Yeah. You know, Jesus says with the salt, but if we lose our savor, yeah. you know, we become ineffective. Yeah. And I think living in this culture, um, with all the unrest that we have going on, mm -hmm. if we're not careful, the body of Christ will lose its ability to influence. And I think probably in the last two months, a lot of that has happened. Yes. I know whether you not not just dealing with issues of color but in the whole political realm christians mm -hmm. have such a terrible testimony in how they not only treat each other but the things that they say and 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 they put it out there on facebook yes. and yeah it just ruins a lot of testimonies part of what we can do to bridge is what we're doing now because it's the reason why god calls his people and, and likens them to sheep mm. sheep follow the leadership of their shepherds mm -hmm. and there's a saying in the uh, african-american culture as go the pastor so goes the people so and i've seen this i've seen congregations that were up under a certain type of minister pastor mm -hmm. and while they were under that person's leadership they were a certain uh, mm -hmm. dynamic huh. new leadership comes in and you see over time they begin to take on mm -hmm. the, the the mindset Huh. You know, the persona, the vision, right. the teachings of their of their uh, pastors. And I think when the people of God see the men of God and the women of God beyond racial yes. uh, uh, barriers that yeah. we put up and they see, you mentioned Bishop Evans and Bishop Scott and um, and Pastor uh, Hunter mm -hmm. who've come in and, uh, you know, the Genesis Church is exposed to diversity mm -hmm. when they leave these sacred walls having been exposed to diversity here, it becomes easier mm. to, to, to confront inequality when we yeah. see it outside, but also embrace right. diversity because yeah. we see it within the house of God. Yeah, yeah, I remember and I was really encouraged uh, back in the summer there, I forget what month it was, but I know Pastor Kearney mm -hmm. uh, headed that up. There was another lady, I think from Bishop Cease's church, uh, who put together a gathering at Penn Park. Mm -hmm. And it was a yes. Sunday afternoon we prayer. Yeah. Yes. And I was glad to see 
uh, people from our church there. I was glad to see that it wasn't just me or a few others who have connections that would show up, but I was glad to see. And so I think that's true what you're saying. Pe people begin to experience and then they, they become a part of that. One thing that I've, I've, I've seen here, because you're, you're talking about um, Jim Crow, Mm -hmm. and the, uh, the the racial disparities of the South. Mm -hmm. The Mason-Dixon line, which is the, the borderline mm -hmm. from, from freedom to slavery, is only 30 miles, roughly, south yeah. of here. <laughs> so this area has, I mean, just think about it. You, you come across the Pennsylvania-Maryland border, you come north, you, 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 know, you, you, you are free. Yeah. You go south, you know, you're in oh. slavery. Just, just that history. And so this area, has a rich, robust heritage that we can learn from mm -hmm. if we know the history, right? And not not try to run from it, but learn from it. Yeah. And I think um, what we are seeing today in our country is that we have run from the truth of what's mm -hmm. happened in this country, as opposed to learn from it. Mm -hmm. And truth has a way of reckoning. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said, "You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free." Why? Truth doesn't die. Right. It's going to, uh, I think yeah. uh, Dr. King said, truth crushed to the earth. He, he quotes, I think, Carlisle, truth crushed to the earth will rise again. Mm -hmm. So you might try to suppress truth, yeah. but truth has a way of resurrecting. Yeah. And I think the truth of, of this nation that we have tried to run from mm -hmm. for so long is now demanding right. to be reckoned with. Yeah. And Dr. King understood that when he said that we're inextricably tied. To one mm -hmm. another what um happens to one of us indirectly and directly affects all of us yeah. so i think you know um you embracing the uh the prophetic words of dr king and connecting it mm -hmm. to what's going on today is very profound mm. i know sometimes i hear people say especially in an urban setting uh you might have a church come in and they want to do this for the neighborhood and they want to do that for the neighborhood and, and it almost comes across in a way of arrogance or coming up over people and I don't know if it's time or if it's a mannerism that there's something you could share with us to help people who are listening not to have that spirit but I think for me it's been time in the sense that folks have seen me be consistent that it wasn't a matter of coming in and doing a project and leaving and feeling good about it, but it was every day just showing up. But I, how how can we, uh, uh, and we, we have a group of uh, people in our church, I would say we have a, a mixture of people now of, of color, but how, I'll, I'll just use the term white church just to kind of delineate it. How can we learn to help people of other cultures, other races, uh, break down that wall where it looks like, oh, we're the savior? That's a profound question. Um, and I think it's worthy of conversation. Mm -hmm. The last thing Dr. King was trying to do when he was assassinated mm -hmm. was the Poor People's Campaign because he understood that um, the marginalization of the masses takes away from the greatness of this country. This country is the most affluent mm -hmm. on the planet of the earth by far. Mm -hmm. And yet when you look at the disparity, of the poor mm -hmm. and 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 how we marginalize them and many times demonize them and victimize them mm -hmm. um, of social conditions that are not their fault many times mm -hmm. you know there, there many people who are watching this our uh, conversation are one paycheck away mm -hmm. from from being homeless yeah. you know uh, the average citizen doesn't have a month's worth of savings mm -hmm. you know in their account so and that's that's regardless whether you're black or white. Poverty knows no color. Right. And Dr. King understood that. He mm. understood the commonality of our black uh, brothers and sisters and our white brothers and sisters was the poverty. Mm -hmm. So he began to launch a poor people's campaign to bridge the gap, to help us to understand okay. that we are a lot more similar than we are different. Because mm. the poverty issue is, yeah. is, is where we're at. I think when you talk about coming into communities of disparity mm -hmm. and you're talking about trying to come in there's all there's already a suspicious uh, you know mm -hmm. why are you here yeah yeah and i think um one of the things that you are doing in terms of breaking down those barriers is as god began to give you a diverse um 
population. Mm -hmm. You got to be bold enough to be able to speak to the hurts mm. and the issues that those populations under your ministry is facing mm. because you have to take that word and connect God's word with yeah. their problems right the same way you have to take that word and compare it to the problems of somebody who might be living in the suburbs mm. so the, the the challenge of being a kingdomite is being able to speak to the hurts of everybody whether mm. you're black white latino and i think the fact that you're having these conversations and putting them on facebook and allowing your congregation to see that you're willing to establish relationships mm -hmm. to understand the hurt right. but also to be a conduit of mercy grace and love yes to meet people where they are without mm -hmm. a political agenda a social agenda or a religious agenda mm -hmm. and i think what you're doing now mm -hmm. and bridging those conversations is the way and partnering with established ministries in those communities right to um to to introduce you that you know the genesis church are, are our friends and so when mm -hmm. you go in with bishop scott and and because they know him and you're with him they're going to embrace you right or if you come around shiloh and we like yeah. we're doing a we're doing hope fest you know we do hope fest mm -hmm. and uh listen this year the genesis church pastor tomb uh they're going to spend uh, a day with us mm -hmm. when you come into that area that community is going to automatically embrace you because they know us mm -hmm. and you coming in with mm -hmm. us will allow those barriers to be mm -hmm. minimized. So I want to applaud you for, for, I think these type of conversations, candid, transparent mm -hmm. conversations yeah. um, have to be made within the body of Christ. And so I want to commend you and the Genesis Church. And mm -hmm. I think what you're doing will definitely uh, precipitate that process. Yeah. Well, I think one of the things that I have learned, and I think sometimes people are afraid, is to have the conversation. Yeah. That, okay, regardless of a person's skin color, it's an individual, it's a person. And it's a communication you can have as just talking to anyone else that you would talk to. And just breaking down that fear barrier. That if you have an honest heart, if you're looking really to improve, to be different, to really learn how to come together, people are willing to talk about that. I think one thing we have to be... Uh, understanding in this conversation is that sometimes in trying to learn misinterpretations and mm -hmm. misunderstandings may be had along the way yeah but that should not undermine right the learning process yeah um, and i think sometimes when it comes to racial issues mm -hmm. we become so defensive that even if something is said in a way that's misunderstood mm -hmm. it can be taken to the context that you're labeled a certain yes. way and so I think, um, and Dr. King, going back to um, to um, what you said about, about your preaching, mm -hmm. his letter to the Birmingham, his letter from the Birmingham jail, I think addresses that because he was talking to white ministers mm -hmm. uh, from jail who had who had written a letter, who had written a uh, ad in the paper about him being an instigator and outside mm -hmm. coming in, upsetting the status quo. So while he was in the Birmingham jail, he responded mm. to the op-ed that they wrote. Mm -hmm. And so he took the op-ed and a point-by-point -point dissertation began to outline mm. one of the greatest writings about the segregation Jim Crow and what was happening. Mm. And he talks about uh, that, that silence now, I'm paraphrasing, silence now does not necessarily mean success later. Mm that gradualism and the status quo. Mm -hmm. And he talked about uh, those who are the oppressor very seldom mm -hmm. give up uh, to those who are the oppressed. And so he, he writes this masterful mm -hmm. dissertation to, to help our white moderate brothers and sisters at the mm -hmm. time, who from a, from, a, from a place, a very well place of fear, mm -hmm. you know, and blowback because yeah. there was a lot of stuff going on during that time and um and there was a lot of uneasiness so he understood them mm -hmm. he never demonized them right he embraced them as brothers and sisters yeah and i think that is the that is mm -hmm. the the road to recovery yeah 
And many of those pastors, uh, after he was assassinated, went on to become some of the leading voices mm -hmm. in trying to bring about the end of segregation and Jim Crow. Yeah, when I when I think about Dr. King, as you're saying that uh, about that dissertation there, I think about uh, you know most people uh, maybe that's too broad, but a lot of people would uh, label him as an instigator. Yes, they and did. yet as I watch some biographies about his life, he was an educated man. Yes, you know he had went to college. He had his master's degree, his doctorate degree. Uh, he wasn't just somebody who was out there wanting to cause trouble. He, he was able to articulate, he he knew his mission. And I think sometimes people don't realize because they want to see a person as an instigator. And yet he was someone who brought a lot of intelligence along with a lot of his compassion and, and passion. You, you talk about instigator, but the Christ that we preach about. Yeah, when when, when right. you look back at history, he was what the the status quo of the time, yeah. the, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, yeah. all of them called him an instigator. He comes up here to stir up the people. Yeah. <laughs> and and yet we preach about him and salvation comes through his name. Yeah. So many times God sends those voices mm -hmm. into the commonality of the politic yeah. to upset the status quo because what God is saying is there's more work to be done. Yes. And so uh, many of your greatest voices throughout history during the time of their uh, mission were mm -hmm. labeled as instigators, yeah. insurrectionists, etc. Yeah. But looking back, we we have a different perspective in the rear view mirror versus, right. you know, the front and side view. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is more, I guess, of a cultural question. Um, as much as I have watched people become so agitated about our political scene, is that in a part of the black community as well? Do you find that regardless of what race you are, it, it can be a, a position of maybe not thinking Christ-like, but... Yes. Um, historically, the African-American pulpit has always been one of social justice. So. Mm -hmm. From a historical context, it's not something that we're not used to. Mm -hmm. And and taking the Bible and 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 seeing the stories of Moses and the mm -hmm. stories of the prophets uh -huh. and connecting them to social issues that we're mm -hmm. experiencing. I think what we're seeing now is a frustration that is breeding hate mm -hmm. and division. And what we are seeing is a manifestation of what we've run from for mm -hmm. so long. Um, and so what the black church is doing and has done is being able to see. I, I was talking to one of our, I, I, was, I was sharing about the prophets of old. Mm -hmm. When you look at the prophets of the Old Testament, they had three types of vision. They had insight. Mm -hmm. They had sight. And he had foresight. Mm. The prophets had insight in that they understood God's position on issues of immorality and sin with Israel from a from a past. Mm -hmm. So they had insight on how God dealt with them mm. in the past. They had sight because they was able they were able to see the conditions of the people in relation to the insight of the wow. past and say with foresight, based on our insight of what God has done in the past. Right. And what we're doing right now, right. if we continue this line of living and this line of rebellion, mm -hmm. foresight tells us judgment's going to come. Yeah. I think what the pastors today, we've, we have sight, but we've lost insight and foresight. Mm. Foresight tells us that if America, and this is not being political, this is right. being practical. Right. If this country or any country that says they are one nation under God, that when we, when the frameworkers of this constitution, of this democracy, um, aligned itself with the God of the Bible, mm -hmm. what they basically released God to do was to deal with America the way he dealt with Israel. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what yeah, they, yeah. That, they they came into allegiance right. with the God of Israel. And so what we release God to do in this nation is to deal with us mm. the way you dealt with Israel. Yeah. If that be the case, when we look at insight, 
God dealt with Israel through judgment. Right. So if we say that we are in covenant with the God of the Bible, and uh -huh. that's the God that, that the frameworkers of this democracy was talking about, yes. then that means as a pastor who reads the Bible with insight, mm -hmm. who's living in this world with sight, mm -hmm. that tells me, foresight tells me that if we continue down this road, God's judgment mm. is going to come on this country. Yeah. And, and no country, I don't care who we are, are outside the boundaries of yes. judgment. And so I think the pastors have to become more prophetic and less political mm. and tell God's people judgment is coming. You know, we serve mm. a God of mercy, but also a God of wrath. Right. That's true. And um, and he said that in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, if my people who are called, right. then will I open up. But what if my people don't? Mm. What if they don't right. uh, humble themselves, yeah. seek my face, turn from their wicked ways? Right. Then God will not hear from heaven, yeah. and He will not heal the land. So that tells us if we don't, God will. What will yeah. He do? Judge, judgment. Mm. So I think we as pastors have to become more prophetic. Yes. And I'm not saying hellfire and brimstone. I'm saying. Right. Turn people from the crisis to the cross. Yes. As you are talking about that, it, it's exciting. There's a there's an author. In fact, my son works at his church in northern New Jersey, uh, uh, Jonathan Kahn. He's a Jewish uh, man who's converted, has a church. And, of course, being in that historical context as a Jewish person, the books that he writes, he writes just what you're describing. Wow. You know, where when he takes what's going on in America— he is liking it to what we see in God's word where God dealt with the nation of Israel. Yes. So that, yes. that's exciting to hear that because now I've heard it from two perspectives. Yes. But yeah, so it, it, this is a topic we could talk all day about. <laughs> I mean, we could go on and on, but thank you at well, least for today. And we'll have to have you back again for some other you. stuff. Thank but you. we do have a couple minutes. And what I wanted to do was, I didn't know if there was anything you wanted to share about Shiloh Baptist Church. We always like to let our people know that, hey, there's other ministries out there. We like to let them know about and just kind of what God's doing. Well, the Lord, you know, during this during this COVID pandemic, we see that Christ still provides, Jehovah mm -hmm. Jireh. So um, yesterday we had an event, COVID testing. Uh, so even though we're not meeting um, mm -hmm. in terms of Sunday gathering, yes. the ministry is still going yeah. on. So uh, our services are online every, every Sunday mm -hmm. at 10 a.m. Okay. On Facebook, uh, and uh, you would type in, go to Facebook and just put SBC York, and that'll take us to our mm -hmm. Shiloh page. Um, and all of our all of our ministry activities. Mm -hmm. um, if you're interested in following us with the app, we do have a church app, oh, um, okay. and we can give that information to you. If you have um, your Android or your uh, Apple phone, just go to your app store and just type in My Church app. And then when the download the My Church app app, and then you'll see a search window come on and it'll just type in Shiloh Connect. Mm -hmm. It will download the Shiloh app to your phone. But we look forward to working with you in the future. Yeah. I know we've worked with the uh, BMA. Yes. We've worked. Yeah. Uh, we've. I don't think we've worked in terms of our congregations. Right. We've worked with our callings. Yes. And uh, yeah. let me say, uh, uh, John and Carol. Are still at Shiloh oh, working. Okay. All right. uh, working. Carol, at Carol was a wonderful friend yes, of my wife. So yes, yeah. yes, and yeah. uh, they they ask about you often, and they're very proud of what you're doing well. here. So I'll definitely let them know that I spoke with you. Yeah. But uh, I want to thank you and the Genesis Church for oh, this opportunity. Welcome. Hopefully, uh, uh, we'll be able to come back and continue yes. this conversation yes. about Dr. King, his legacy, and what that means to us today. Sure. So folks, if you're listening and you know, here at Genesis, we encourage you to get to know the pastors in the community that uh, we partner with on different levels and you can uh, take social media and jump into some of their activities and start to feel a little bit of connection there. So thank you for watching tonight. Uh, appreciate that. And we look forward to seeing you again. Have a good evening.